Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Today we're at Goodrich Castle. Now I've been here hundreds of times with school groups over the years, but what people don't realize, you're actually in range of the castle now. If you're gonna attack, this is the main approach and it was deadly. From here, longbowmen, crossbowmen, and then muskets and cannons could fetch you down. So let's have a, have a good look as we approach the castle and see how well situated Goodrich Castle was right on the very borders of Herefordshire and then Gloucestershire. We're actually along a ridge. If you look down there, you'll see how sheer it is. And there's an open slope on the other side. So this is pretty much the only way you're going to approach the castle. Yeah, this castle saw a lot of action in the Civil War, the 1640s and the dead, so I was told, are buried just over here in this field. And they planted a tree, and uh, that's the site of the grave. But there were lots of dead buried all the way along this field, and it goes back to ancient history, because there's been a site here, a castle site here, from the ancient days. But as we walk around, you'll see the approach to the castle. You come in along this ridge, all of these towers are going to open shot and open fire on you. And then you've got to go around the castle to actually attack the front barbican. All you have in the distance is the old priory and you can just about see a road bridge in the distance there going over the river. And this is the thing about the castle, it's surrounded on three sides by the River Wye. The situation is castle high up on the hill is brilliant. And you look how deep the ditch is. You're going to attack it You've got to waste lives just getting to it. And in the Civil War, even when they had cannons and mortars, they had a hard job taking this castle. It is quite incredible, but there are hidden bits to it. People miss some of the most interesting bits. So let's go and have a look. At the front of the castle here, there was a barbican and the whole barbican is missing. It's just the foundations, but there was a neat little drawbridge just in front of it. Let's go and walk over what was the drawbridge. So, remains of stone. There was something here because a drawbridge used to close over this. This was in fact a gatehouse and you can still see where the counterweights for the drawbridge either side used to fold down. So you walk into the gatehouse of the Barbican that is. This is where the original gatehouse was. There was a closing door here and the Barbican went all the way around. Most people walk straight past this. This used to be the entrance to the guard room in the Barbican. So you're walking through the door. There's the door jam up the steps, you're in the little guard room. Probably an arrow slit stood here. And there must have been an upstairs because of the, the way the drawbridge actually opened and closed here. But this is a castle of drawbridges. There's two fabulous drawbridges would have been on this castle, one in the Barbican and one at the very entrance to the gatehouse of the castle itself. But we'll have a look at that in a minute. What I really enjoy about this whole fortress, I've not found another one like it in all of England, perched high upon a perfect hill. Even the water supply to this castle, you couldn't interrupt it, it was deep down. When they found this, Iron Age is the beginnings, then the Normans with their um, building here, they really knew what they were doing. As a bowman, right, look at that, look at that arc of shot. You can fetch anybody down up here. And then later on with artillery and muskets, well, you want to take this castle? You're going to take it, but you're going to pay in blood. And in fact, that's what happened. But this is the amazing bit over here. So you come through the door, actually into the walls, and you can have a poop here. Not now. But in those days you could, this was a garderobe. They did something very interesting. They had cisterns high up on the wall that collected rainwater. 
and a pipe there you unplug it and it flushes all the guard robe out if you come up here and then you can see how high up we are and you can see the river Wye, how it snakes around the back of the castle. What a great view. It was amazing to think that 1900, this place was totally overgrown, ruined. And it was the locals, so I understand, who started to pick away at all the undergrowth and strip back the walls of the castle. Then the Ministry of Works, as they called it in those days, started to put things in. They built some steps going up to the gatehouse of the castle, because don't forget, we're stood in the Barbican, the outer defensive part of the castle. So you've had to fight your way along here, get across that drawbridge there, get through the soldiers here, capture this, and then you've got to go straight up there. And I will tell you, if you look at the castle, imagine the towers back where they used to be, the arrow slits. They'll be shooting you to pieces. In fact, there's one, you can barely see it nowadays, but a man to shoot from it had to lie down with a crossbow. We'll have a look inside, see if we can actually sneak our way in, but let's go and have a look. So these steps have been put in by the Ministry of Works. Apparently it was a ramp and it was much higher than this from the Barbican. Obviously we're missing some levels. There was a waist high wall going all the way down. So if you're coming up, you're being shot at from all of these different towers. And this is where the drawbridge actually lowered here. And it's a brilliant drawbridge, counterweights and everything. It stopped. If you look, oh, there's a bit missing. Somebody's pinched a bit of the castle. It actually stopped. So you've got the drop going all the way down to the bottom. If you have a look over the edge, you'll see. That's the drop. You can still see here. You can actually see where the counterweights and the workings of the drawbridge actually came through. So you imagine you've got it down and then you raise this great big drawbridge up. and There's so much of it missing, it's sad, but this is just one little piece. There is a surprise waiting for you. Put a castle door on here. You've got put lugs to lock it. The great big through lock beams. Why was the castle gates shod in iron? Any idea? If you've seen me Chapstow video, you'll understand why. And here you have your first portcullis. It's one of the few 13th century virtually preserved gatehouses. Right, come on in, this is so exciting. People miss this all of the time. Come closer, come closer. You've come through one portcullis. There's another portcullis here. Then there's the main doors, which have been fastened, great big oak doors. So you've got massive oak doors here, right? And they have their great shutting beams. Now, interestingly, to get this far, you've come across the Barbican drawbridge. You've come across the main drawbridge. You've come into the main doors. You've come through one portcullis. There are oblique uh, arrow slits here. And then you come to this final obstacle, the portcullis, the main doors. You've got to come and stand where I am. We're going to change places. There's something really rare here. If you look up there, you've got a reverse battlement, arrow slits. They're actually pointing inwards. So the room that's missing above the drawbridge there, they would have had soldiers in. You're trying to get in, bring in your batter ram, battering ram, they're shooting down at you. Now, it's said there are murder holes above us, but we're in debate. They may have been actually counterweight holes. Same as Chepstow, really. So you've got to smash your way all the way through all of this. I don't think anybody ever made it, if you want the truth, but let's have a look in the guard room round the side. 
This is actually so rare. This is a, basically a 13th century gatehouse and it's pretty much without the woodwork though. It, the stonework is complete. Let's have a look inside. Very unsteady floor, so do be careful. Arrow slits pointing out. Arrow slits pointing in. At the end here, three different apertures. The narrow for the crossbow. A wider one for outside, which would have had shutters on it to keep a draft out. This one, the narrow one points into the drawbridge and then behind you, a fireplace with its own chimney. So even the guard chamber has its own fireplace. So shutters on some of the windows to keep the draft out, a nice blazing fire, keep your guards comfortable. If they're cold, if they're wet and they're damp, they're no good. You've got to look after your garrison. Here they can see all the way around and if need they can defend and they can keep warm and if need be they can also cook. So you've got over the drawbridge to the barbican, the drawbridge to the gatehouse, the main door, the two portcullises, the other door, come inside. Just here you're actually inside a room. There was a wall there. There was an entranceway down, a wall across here, arrow slits, so as you're coming through they'll be shooting at you. Then an archway across here which may have had doors on it. So as you emerge out into the courtyard you're going to be shot at from 360 degrees. So this was the well house and as you can see it goes down considerable distance. If I remember correctly I might be wrong I'm going back on memory it's about 120 meters deep it goes right the way down through the bedrock but there is a tragedy. 1924 February a chap called Thomas Wheeler fell down here when he was working and uh, Thomas was trapped by a beam apparently and crushed but there were no phones and no emergency services in those days and the poor chap died here. He left behind a widow and 12 children. And what's lovely about it is we have a little, it's a tiny little plaque. But what it says is, you know, his contribution to the preservation of this castle makes it what it is today. And it's true because Thomas Wheeler had survived the First World War only to be killed working as a mason here. This is a bit of the castle that I've never been in. So I'm going to explore. Let's see where it leads. Oh, wow. I know where we are. We're on top of the gatehouse now. Had a fireplace, keep the chaps warm. Lots of windows and ways through. This has been blown out actually by the looks of it. But what you have here, this is where your first port cullis comes up, counterweights. This is some kind of pivot. Now I find this fascinating because I'm not sure how things wound around. But the second port cullis is just inside there. So we're missing so much timber. I'd love to see what was on that made this actually work. But unfortunately, it's long since gone. So you've got your great big axle, call it what you will. And then you'll have your things to wind it up. That's bringing it up. Are you with me? So you're winding the thing all the way up. And then when you want it to get down, you simply release the locking mechanism and the weights will actually drop them all the way down. So I think I've figured it out in my head. So there is an axle there and the men will do that kind of thing, bringing these enormous portcullises up. And then through here, a defensive tower. But the front of it is gone. All part of the damage, the slighting after the Civil War. We're now going down, down 
into the deep, darkest depths of the castle. So we're in the northern range of the castle. Now, downstairs where we are, it's quite possibly the original Great Hall because from the 15th, 16th century, they put another story on it, the solar as it's called. But what I love about this room is this. This basin has been here since the beginning. It's built in and it's a bit of a, an anomaly because there appears to be water that can come down and we don't know how it worked. Possibly fed from the well, so people bringing water up from the well, did they feed it into a cistern that then fed this water? There was also a drain hole. So this is actually a, a proper sink. You can have water and you can drain it. There's the remains of a bath down here. This room actually it tells us so much. So the great hall, complete with its sink, the fantastic postern gate you walk through. The windows here were magnificent. You can imagine ladies on the window seat here, sat there looking out in the medieval time, people having their banquets and their meals in this part of the castle. But then 15th, 16th century, they built upstairs. At the top of the pillar here, the capital part of it, is brand new. It's all been replaced and going across the two arches, but that would be upstairs. They added an extra floor to it. And then if we go across to the other quarter, these were apartments. The whole thing is missing. Now I was given two reasons that this has gone and they both belong to the Civil War. You put it all back together again, blazing fire, nice windows to see out, also big enough to put a small cannon in if you wish. But they had a mortar and they dropped them onto the castle, blowing the roofs off like that. They also dug underneath. What happened was this tower actually collapsed as part of the attack during the Civil War. So here we are, the Great Hall, or the second Great Hall. Stone seats, people to sit down. And an absolute enormous fireplace. This was the place to be. But you know, they got fed up of the servants sleeping in the Great Hall. So they eventually built extra rooms, the solar on top of the old Great Hall more rooms up in this tower. It became more of a home. So all of these lovely windows they had in the Great Hall, we're not sure if they had glass in them, but what we do know is that the holes were actually for shutters. So these could be closed off, nice and secure against the enemy, but also against the elements. And there are lots of windows in this Great Hall. It must have been quite a lovely place to be. So just above, you actually have the stone corbels for supporting the roof. Underneath them, you have uh, finials, which would either have been for torches or for some other decorative piece. But if you look up yonder, you can actually see the slope of the original roof. Entrances to rooms. So we're downstairs in the cellar of this tower. If you look in the corner there, you can see where the stairs came up from the stables that I mentioned. And it's all been replaced and rebuilt. But we are in the cellars here. If you look above us, you can see all of the putlugs that used to divide the room. So there'd be different floors and stories. These were chambers, a beautiful fireplace up there. That must have been a main chamber. This wasn't cold and drafty, these places were kept warm. It'd be wonderful to see it all put back together, but I don't think we ever will. But with your imagination, you can still see what it once looked like. So here we are in the kitchens, completely taken out after the Civil War. The big fire range here, all gone, but you can just see 
the remains of the bakery. These were the ovens. Two lots of ovens, one below, one on top. And this is where there would have been a great big fireplace and chimney. This is where most of your cooking would have been done. So on either side of the fireplace, you have other ovens, either as warming ovens or bake your pies. This was quite something. There's a drain here so that lots of your washing and washing up would have been done. And a very rare piece, rare piece indeed. You're gonna to have to focus on this. It's not much, but it's part of the original lead piping that was put in in the later history of the castle. Because amazingly, they had lead pipes. I think it was in the Tudor times, all the way across from the hills, and it built up pressure and siphoned water up into a tank in the castle, and you just pulled the plug out, and water came down, and you got running water in the Tudor times. Isn't that fantastic? And this kitchen was a lean-to, so that was your curtain wall, your main wall that went across. Your fire is built into it, your ovens are built into it, and you can see the slope of the roof over there, up against the, uh, the Norman keep. And over here, a cupboard, simply that. And then, the remains of the doorway. The door opened inwards. <laughs> it's amazing what you can tell. In my opinion, this is the best view of the Norman keep. And some of the stonework is quite incredible. If you look at the top window, you've got this decorative drip stone just below the window. But if you look at that, that top round arched window, that is pure Norman. And then when you come down to the second window, that's been changed. And that's, it's either been changed or has it been added, you know, because that's Gothic in its design, so it's different. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a walk down there and then we're gonna climb that tower and have a look from the very top of Goodrich Castle. There is the legend, the right-handed swordsman can fight better against the advancing right-handed swordsman because his sword will get caught. Interesting. So, the keep, the oldest part of the castle. When you think about it, these towers were dark. Dark and small. 15 by 15 feet, we reckon this is on the inside. And I'm just gonna go up one of the very narrow stairways to get to the top. Cramped, smelly, but at the end of the day, it's a defensive tower. There was some form of settlement, fortress, call it what you will here, from the Bronze Age, going around the outer parts of the castle there is actually the remains of a ditch which you can see at certain times of the day from high up but this stone keep was built the first part of the castle in the mid 12th century it is an archetypal perfect Norman keep and it is still the highest part of the castle you add a few more feet for the battlements and you have the most extraordinary watchtower secure also accommodation downstairs, be it dismal, people could survive in this tower. And just an interesting little thing, some years ago, they were digging down under the stairs, they found a load of cannonballs from the Civil War. Nice one. If you pan around, you'll see. You've got the river wide down there, fish ponds on the other side. And I will just point out for you, you can see the ridge line over there. That's where the roundheads, the parliamentarians, placed their guns during the siege during our Civil War. 1646, they attacked this castle. So, Goodrich Castle, held by the Royalists in the Civil War, 1642 to 1645 46. There were lots of little scraps around this castle, uh, but I'll tell you, the parliamentarian troops got fed up of it and they actually forged this themselves. They actually made Rory Meg. About a mile and a half down, then they brought it onto the hill opposite. 
200 pound shells and they fired I believe over 20 or thereabouts and uh, their colonel himself firing I think 18 of the shells because he wanted to see what they could do or well, what they could do was this they could drop down through the roof and then blow everything out that's why this bottom corner of the castle is basically missing what a job just at the base of the norman tower we have the prison the dungeon i have terrified more kids down here than you could ever imagine it's brilliant now when i first come here they didn't have a wooden floor it had the original stone floor and it was just soaking wet you're a prisoner in here you're going to suffer door will be shut food will just be passed through a hole at the back of the prison it's a miserable place so here we are in the southeast tower in the basement or the cellar you can see where all the holes go for the joists the put lugs as i call them so we're in the basement there are defensive positions in the basement but then on the first floor you can see there's a beautiful fireplace and as you come around there's a lovely window once again can be used for defense but also it is to let in light and then there is a niche in the wall just to the left of the window which is a basin of some kind but then when you look above you can see there was another room with another fireplace so this tower must have been quite splendid so if you repeat it all the way around the castle you've got some splendid rooms and interestingly some of these these are big enough for a longbowman to actually stand and shoot they're also big enough for a crossbowman to get in there and of course later on a gun so every tower sumptuous luxurious but also defendable Now, fantastically, there is a walkway across the top of the southeast tower, which leads onto the battlement. So let's go and explore, and it'll give us a lovely view from upstairs, downstairs of that tower. So this is a fantastic view of the southeast tower. You can see the fireplaces, absolutely magnificent. But then the niche that I described from downstairs, if you look up above it, there's another one in the next floor and there appears to be a drain hole in it so there was some form of plumbing here these rooms were absolutely luxurious beautiful I suppose in your mind you've got to put it all back together haven't you we're in the latrine tower So this guard robe is magnificent. It's got three sections to it. So you could probably have three people sat here on nice wooden seats. They can all close down. There would have been shutters on the window there, or it can be open. But if you look down the pit or the sump, call it what you will, is absolutely enormous. But there again, sometimes there was an awful lot of people in the castle. But we'll go around and we'll have a look at the central part. So this is the central vault here and if you look down you can see the opening that we showed you from outside so this is the right hand chamber of the public latrines if you like of the castle anybody could use these the lord and ladies they of course had their own now once these were filled up they had to be dug out now i've shown you from the outside that you can actually get a young person to get in there and dig it out they had to drain, they had to drain well so that the, the poop could actually dry. Then it can be dug out properly because you couldn't lower people down into the morass, could you? But these systems actually worked. As I said, this is a castle of garderobes. Now where we're going, this is a range, the East Range, and it changed 
once upon a time, from what I can tell, it used to be a stone building, but then that was demolished and it became a half timbered kind of affair. I'll try and explain as we, as we go along. So there was a family here, the Talbot family, famous name, especially the Wars of the Roses time, the Talbots. If you look, you can see a diagonal shape in the wall and that corresponds on this side. That was the medieval roof line. And then later on, they actually had an apex roof and you can see a new fireplace for an upper story. So they actually turned this range, this east range, into accommodation. So as you came in through the courtyard, you'd see all the stonework around, but when you look to your left, it would be like half timbered Tudor house kind of thing. Yeah. So here we are in the chapel. It's been refurbished, had a new roof put on it. Yeah, and it still shows you everything that was here. Look at the actual design on this, the carving. Medieval man. Niches with the little drain in it. Plumbing in this castle was so important. And then you come across, although this is a niche for sitting in, it's also a defensive position. Crossbowmen could lie or kneel in there. The same here. And then you have where the high altar was. Again, a modern window. The sacraments are kept in here. But of course, this being next to the gatehouse, important, a putlug, a great big long beam could be thrust through this, locking the front door. It's the locking bar. And look here, an arrow slit. Interestingly, they're slightly offset, so you're not gonna shoot straight through the one opposite. And the little piece people miss. Come and have a look up here. Just have a look. It's a stairway. In some respects, it's like the stairway to heaven, but it's not. So there was a balcony here. So the ladies could actually watch the proceedings and they wouldn't have to mix with the other people, you know, people like me. And when the service is over, they can simply filter out through the door, back to their apartments, to civilization. But uh, let's go and have a look outside the walls. It's quite interesting. Up until, I suppose, recent history, there used to be a wall across here. And when they were renovating and doing the stuff, it fell off. But if you turn around, if you come here, and then turn around, you can see some of the original plaster work. So that would be inside and outside. You know, there's evidence that many castles were actually plastered smooth on the outside and painted too. This is what's left of a garderobe tower. So although there are two garderobe pits here, they both actually empty into the same one because the first hole is for the garderobe here. Then there was a wall that went up and the other garderobe was accessed from further up and it was a double one as well so you've got plenty of room for two people and you know <laughs> I was asked this by some kids so what did they use for toilet paper moss nice green moss there's loads of it growing on the wall got a bit of a postern gate here there was a door but it's been filled in but it looks like there was actually some form of portcullis that went up and down here but the grooves have been half filled in but if you look up as you come underneath you can see that it goes all the way up so this must be a well protected door and of course he had a good door on the outside possibly wooden structures on the outside even forming some form of drawbridge so we're in the outer bailey but this would have been from what i can tell a garden and then the curtain walls ran from the front. You can still see the remains of them all the way down to the bottom corner here. This is great when you're showing people how the inside of walls were actually constructed. So you have all the rough stone inside. Somebody was saying to me they didn't have concrete. Oh, this looks like concrete to me. Yeah, heavy cement with all of the stones inside it. You can actually see the thickness of the tower walls. And this is one of those 
you know, that I showed you earlier on from the inside, it was either blown out or it simply collapsed when they were digging underneath it. But over here, we have a tower. Oh, it's gone. We've still got the imprint of it. So you see the line of the curtain wall, the outer wall of the castle, coming into a defensive position here. This was a, a, a sort of a tower, a squat tower building, had its own guard or robe, all of that kind of things in here. But look at its commanding view as a gunnery platform. Quite incredible. Also, it commanded where the ferry was. There was a ferry down there across the Y. So anybody trying to get across the Y with the ferry, they could actually be shot from here. There's an interesting story about that ferry. It was Henry IV was here visiting and had heard through a messenger that his son, who will become Henry V, had been born at Monmouth Castle. And he was so excited, he went down, he got the ferry and the ferry took him all the way to Monmouth. He was so pleased, he gave the ferryman the license for the ferry, made him a rich man for life. So you still have the curtain wall here going all the way down, but here was the stables. You imagine the hooves clippity-clop as they came in and out of this doorway. You still have the remains of the stalls. This was destroyed in part of the attacks of the Civil War. They destroyed the stables first. There's something I like about this place is part of the original floor is here and you have the drain. You know, people, as I say in, in some of my other comments, you know, people pass by stuff, they don't see it because I suppose they're, they're not looking for it. And I've been here dozens and dozens and dozens of times. And each time I find a new interesting little bit. It's like the fact that that wall used to be there, but it fell off and it fell off in fairly modern times. And this is the outlet for the garderobe the ones that we were in further up. So there must have been some form of drain that went around here. And you've got other parts of buildings and a trough here. So was this a horse trough? Just left there, destroyed after the Civil War. So you imagine all the stalls for the horses. The tack room is further up. This is lovely. And it would have been a beautiful half timbered kind of structure going against the castle because the horses were important and in the films you always see people riding their horses into the courtyard in this castle they didn't do that at the entrance they would have dismounted and their horses would have been brought round to here this was a purpose-made place for the horses to live so the curtain walk extends all the way along the outside of the stables. There's another defensive part at the end there. There were apertures, ways in, drains, also ways to shoot out. But the thing is, if you look through the trees, you can see that on the opposite hill, if you placed guns, you could range in on the cannon. That's what happened in the Civil War. They found firm ground. There were no trees here, they were all cleared. And that meant that the enemy could eventually lay down their fire to here and they burnt the stables down completely destroyed them and it also cleared the path then so they could hammer away at these walls once the walls had been breached the castle was finished so it surrendered there were rooms up here so horses over there there are rooms here was it for tack, for equipment, or was it for where the grooms actually slept? And there's a fascinating little bit over here. Post hole, supporting the roof. There's still evidence. You can actually see the lay of the land. A tiny little room here, or was it a fireplace? I don't think it was a garderobe. A set of steps actually cut into the side of the castle. You know, I used to bring the school groups through these stables and tell them the whole story. And they always focused on, why are there steps going up there? And I actually made a mistake. I believed that these steps simply went to the hayloft. But in fact, they used to go in a spiral, which has all now disappeared, and come through the basement of the tower. So if you were inside the castle and you wanted to come to the stables, 
you didn't come all the way around, you simply entered through here. And that makes perfect sense. It's quite interesting being down here in the ditch, because if you look up at the Norman Keep and then look at this corner tower here, they're different stone. What we do know is this ditch was dug out and made deeper as they quarried the stone for the extensions. So if you put the Norman Keep as part of the original stone building, it must have been surface stone or they brought the stone in. The rest of it has literally been quarried out of the ditch, making it deeper and wider. This whole side of the castle was slighted after the Civil War. It was all pulled down. So the castle could never be used as a fortress again. The main guard rope tower. And this is the outlet. It had several compartments upstairs. It came down here. And then as it settled, all of the juice, shall we say, the runny stuff would flow out of here and then down. Now, once this was filled up, they would actually block it off and they would use other gong robes. And then the gong farmer and his wife and his children would actually get in there and dig out all of the poop. And it would be later spread on the ground, dried, broken up and given to the farmers. Well, I hope you enjoyed our tour around Goodrich Castle, a favourite place of mine. Uh, if you did, like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on the all notification buttons. You just don't know what we're going to get up to next. Before I go, mention a couple of my Patreons. Um, Marco Engelbracht, hope you're keeping well, Marco. And Richard McPherson, thanks a million, guys. Bye for now.